Welcome biologists, today we are looking at the structure of the mitochondrion. This is taken from the OCR specification for A-level biology, which is 5.2.2, respiration. So we need to know about the different components within the mitochondria. We need to know their role as well. We also need to know how to identify mitochondria and the parts of the mitochondria from a diagram and also from an electron microscope image. So we we'll start off with the different components involved with the mitochondria. If you want to pause the video and try and label as much as you can now, it's probably a good idea. But here are the components that are just popping up on the screen. We're going to go through what each one of them does and what their role is within the mitochondria. So the first one, ATP synthase, so anything ending with A's is usually an enzyme. And as this suggests, this enzyme is involving, involved in making ATP. Through the process of chemiosmosis, which we'll learn about later on when we get on to oxidative phosphorylation, which is the last stage of aerobic respiration. We also have the matrix, and this is the fluid-like substance inside of the mitochondria. And this contains enzymes that are needed for the Krebs cycle. Again, this is one of the stages of aerobic respiration. We have the intermembrane space, and this is really important in oxidative phosphorylation, uh, where the protons are pumped into, uh, and this helps to build up the concentration of protons. And again, this is all to do with chemiosmosis, which we'll learn about later on. We have the cristae. This is the folding of the inner membrane. And this is really important because it increases the surface area available to attach these ATP synthase enzymes to. And then therefore, the process of chemiosmosis is very, very important. We've got lots of folds within this membrane. We have ribosomes, which are obviously used for protein synthesis. Don't forget, proteins are enzymes as well. So the enzyme ATP synthase would be made by this ribosome. We have granules. I'm not going to talk too much about these because I've never seen this on the specification, but I have included it in case you see it in a textbook and you're wondering what it was. OK, we have DNA present within the mitochondria, and this is plays a vital role in coding for those proteins that are made by the ribosome. So this will contain the genetic information for the enzymes involved in the Krebs cycle in the matrix and also those enzymes uh, involved with creating ATP, such as ATP synthase. Out of interest, though, you can actually trace mitochondrial DNA back throughout history. And that's quite interesting, making those links into evolution, if you did want to have a look at that in your own time. We have the outer membrane. Oh, sorry. We have the outer membrane, which is really important for compartmentalization. It separates the, the components of the mitochondria from the rest of the cytoplasm. But it also involves the control of uh, an entry. It controls entry and exit of substances in and out of the mitochondria, such as pyruvate, oxygen, ATP, and carbon dioxide, which again, you'll learn more about their roles as we go through this topic. And the last one, the inner membrane, which we know is folded into the crystal, but the inner membrane, as we have mentioned, is important because it contains ATP synthase, and it also contains um, the electron transport chain and the components that make up that. So there we have all the components of the mitochondria and what they do. Now, in an exam, you may be given an, um, a uh, sorry, a picture that looks like this. This one is taken from a transmission electron microscope. And I know that it's taken from a transmission electron microscope because I can see cell organelle detail. Now, you would be expected to be able to label A, B and C on this diagram. So if you haven't already done so, try to do that now. But we should be able to recognise that A is the cristae because I can see it's pointing to the folding within it within the inner membrane. I should be able to identify B as being the matrix as that's pointing to the fluid-like substance within inside the mitochondria. And for C, you'd get a mark here either for saying the intermembrane space or the outer membrane here. So you need to be able to identify these components. Another very popular question here is... Why do these mitochondria appear different to the one on the previous slide? This is a really popular question. And the answer is, is because those micro photographs have been cut. The mitochondria have been cut along different planes, as you can see in this diagram here. So there we are. We talked about the structure of the mitochondria. We talked about the components involved and including their roles within the mitochondria. Guys, good luck with your exams. Please remember, do not use the words it, they, amount, or size. Use good scientific ter terminology that will get you all the marks. All the best.